Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Hallelujah. But anyway, we're going to pick up from Isaiah chapter 9, uh, the reading verses 1 through 7. And it says, nevertheless, the dimness. Now, he just actually better back up into the previous chapter. Uh, verse 19, and they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep and have mutter. Should not a people seek their God for the living to the dead, the law, to the law, to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Now, one of the what reason people are walking in darkness is because there's no light in them. They don't, they're not letting the light, and if you're Christians who walk in darkness, they're not going into the word of God and letting it be a light unto them. All right? Hallelujah. They shall pass through it, hardly bestead and hungry. And it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry, they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their God and look upward. And they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble and darkness, dimness of anguish, and they shall be driven to darkness. You see, now when you turn away from God, when you turn away from your answer, you go into darkness. Amen? I've heard people say things like, I was mad at God. That's stupid. I just push you into darkness. You get mad at God, he's the light. You know, I, 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 honestly, I think people who say that are trying to sound like they're cool, that they can be, they're, they're so exalted, they can get mad at God and it's okay. Yeah, yeah right. Uh-huh. And they shall look unto the earth, behold, trouble and anguish, dimness of, dimness of anguish. They shall be driven into darkness. Verse, chapter 9, verse 1, nevertheless. So you just can't start out in chapter 9, verse 1 and kind of take off because a nevertheless is there and it wouldn't make sense. So they've been driven in the darkness. The dimness shall not be as such as in their vexation. When the, the first he lightly uh, he afflicted the land of uh, Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness, I got a little ringing, a little bit too hot on the mic or something, I'm getting a ring. Okay, hallelujah. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. Hallelujah. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? I'm telling you, there's something about light and darkness. How many of you have ever been in a place where you couldn't see a thing? It was so dark. You know, and of course, now what you do is you pull out your cell phone and, and, and press, press the button. You can, oh, it's like a flashlight. You know, of course, there is a flashlight on a lot of them. But that one, you know, just, just to light up the screen will light up so you can see. Amen? It's amazing what light does to darkness. I said it is amazing what light does to darkness. You can be in the darkest hole of anything that you can think of and light, have light come in and it changes the perspective of everything about you. Amen? See, a lot of times in, 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 our, in our thinking and in our ways and our walk, we get into a place where it's so dark that we cannot see anything around us and so we think we're all alone. We think we're the only one. We think there's nothing else going on. But just show some light and all of a sudden you find there's a bunch of folk around Hallelujah. Can you say amen? And they, saw, they that walk in darkness have seen in great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shine. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. The joy before thee, according, they joy before thee, that's the people joy before God, according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. Amen. It, you know, it's amazing how bad it can be, and all of a sudden, you know, if you get the, you just start dividing the spoil. Let's look at it this way. You're sitting around with no money, and somebody writes, runs by and hands you a check for $100. There's some rejoicing. I said, there's some rejoicing. I mean, I, I remember the day that Janie and I, when we first got married, and I had lost my job, and uh, we'd been married about that time, about seven weeks and uh, we had run out of food. We didn't have any more food. We had no more groceries. There was nothing, and there was no more money. Uh, we were completely out. And somebody rang, and our door, actually, we didn't have a doorbell. They beat on our door at uh, like 8 o'clock in the morning. And, and I walked down on the porch and looked. They had a station wagon backed up. And from one end of the back up to the front seats was full of grocery bags. Now, I'm going to tell you, when you don't have any, when you ate your last can of Campbell's, uh, whatever, and you open, up, you open the door, and there's a whole station wagon full of food there's some rejoicing going on amen I said there's some rejoicing going on 
well, I, I rejoiced before I got it. Well, that's fine, but I rejoiced when I got it too. When it showed up, I was happy. I mean, I was doing the happy dance, you know. Amen. Like the little, I couldn't do the penguin things real good, but I, you got it. Anyway. Do y'all folks not watch TV or anything? Amen. But, the, you know, their joy will be like the harvest. Oh, there's always joy at harvest time. Amen. And like with them that divide the spoil. For that, listen to this. Why is there joy? Why is there joy in the earth? Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because for thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder and the rod of his oppressor as in the day of Midian. Now, you know, you just don't, if you just kind of run off from there and don't go back and find out what Midian was about. Israel go back over in the judges, had, had basically walked away from God. And curse came on them. And Midian overtook them and brought them into captivity. And it says this, and they were impoverished because of Midian. Poverty had come on them. Spiritual poverty, financial poverty, which would be your, your harvest and your crops. They were just suffering from impoverishment. They were under a burden. Uh, at the hands of Midian. Now, they got themselves there because they, they, they turned away from God and didn't do what God said, and, they, and a curse came on them because of it. You can't walk away from God and expect blessings to come on you. I don't care what anybody says. The Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible doesn't teach that you can walk in any way you want to walk and then expect the blessings to come on you. No, hallelujah, blessings come on you because either God turns in mercy towards you or because you're walking according to his word. Amen. Hallelujah. It is in the days of Midian. And so, who, who did God raise up to deliver Israel from Midian? Gideon. Gideon delivered them from Midian. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he raised up Gideon. And remember, Gideon went out and got the 30,000 and all this kind of stuff. And, and God said, no, that's too many. And he said, the reason God said it was too many is that if you go win the battle, you'll say, I did it, and it won't give me the credit. Now, I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but that's exactly what he said. Yeah. You go out and do it with 30,000, and you'll take the credit for it. He said, no, nah, that's too many. Got it down to 3,000. That's still too many. Got it down to 300. And they went and defeated the armies with 300. And they could do anything but give God the glory because it wasn't because of the, was it because, what is it? Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. There are going to be times in your walk with God, you're going to have to just sit there, be still. Now, listen, I'm not talking about not ever doing anything, but there's just going to be times you're, you can't do it, and you're going to have to let God do it. You're going to have to stand in faith and see the salvation of your God. Now, I'm not talking about you don't do anything, you don't tithe, you don't give, you don't work, you don't do anything. But I, listen, you can't work six jobs. You physically can't do it. The body can't take it. I mean, you can't work 200 hours a week. The body can't take it. Or it's not even 200 hours in a week. <laughs> That's why you can't work it. But you can't work 120 hours a week. All right? The body just cannot handle that over a long period of time. There's just, you know, you, there's just going to be places you've got to just say, God, I'm going to stand still and see your salvation. Amen. Amen. Anybody going to get enthusiastic at all in here, anywhere? No? Okay. All right. And so... You know, Gideon was raised up to deliver the, hand, the children from the hand of Midian. But what the one I wanted to say was that when they get, went into captivity with Midian, they became impoverished. They began, they be, it was difficult. There was, no, there, was no, there was no financial blessing there. There was no spiritual blessing there. They were just suffering in a state of impoverishment. But God said, and then he raised up Gideon and delivered them, and they came out and liberated, praise God. But God says here in Isaiah that, you know, for as in the day, uh, that God's broken the yoke of, of, the, of his burden, the staff of his shoulder, the rod of the oppressor, as in the day. Just like God delivered Israel from the hand of Midian, and God made sure he got the glory for it. God says, it's just like that, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, for every battle of the warrior is, confu uh, is with confused noise and the garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with the burning and the fuel of fire. Oh, thank God, for unto us, a child is born. Now, here's what God's saying. Just like I raised up Gideon. Remember, there's a lot. Now, Jesse and Shannon, 
Nathan didn't have this particular teacher because he had her son in, at Wesleyan. But they, got, they had a teacher. Every story had a Christ figure. I don't care what it was, she found the Christ figure in every story. Hallelujah. <laughs> They'd read some literature in school, and there was a Christ figure. Even, they're all going where? You know, she, she could find it. You know, in her, in her way of thinking, she, just, she found the Christ figure. But in, in the Bible, there are uh, allegories of the Christ figure in different things. Gideon would be an allegorical Christ figure. He wasn't the Christ, but he was allegorically, he was the Christ figure. He was raised up as a savior for the people of Israel. And God said, just like I delivered Israel from the hands of Midian by Gideon, I will deliver you or I am delivering you. And then he says, for unto us a child is born. Jesus is the answer. Jesus is, you know, uh, there's, a, there's a great line, sh light shining on them in darkness. Amen? They won't stay in the darkness because a light has shined unto them. Praise God. There is a light in the earth today. Now listen, the world is doing everything it can to put it out. They're doing everything they can. you got the people for the freedom from religion who are going around making sure that you can't have a nativity scene up on, on, on public property and that, you know, the, you know, the stores that don't say Merry Christmas and, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And, you know, and, and now everybody's got to celebrate Ramadan and Hanukkah and, and you know, and, and, um, and, 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 you know, so it's all, it's all season's greetings. Well, here's my season greeting. Merry Christmas. Because Jesus is is the reason for the season. Now, uh, John Hagee put up, you know, Jesus is the reason had a wreath, you know, with, uh, okay? Jesus, no, uh, tis the season. It says, tis the season, the wreath, and then it says, tis the reason, and it's a, a crown of thorns. The reason for the season is that Jesus went to the cross and paid the price. Amen. Happy holidays. See, the world thinks are really cool. Happy holidays. Holidays comes from the two combined words of holy day. Don't know if you do that or not. How many know where history, the word history comes from? His story. Put them together, take out one of the S's, history. His story. Holy, holiday is holy day. It is a holy day we're celebrating. We're celebrating the time that God gave into this earth his only begotten son. Hallelujah. He was born into the earth. Can you say glory? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. You know, the child being born is the flesh of Jesus. The son being given is the spirit of Jesus. Hallelujah. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace of the increase of his government. Listen to this. There shall be no end. Now, the world wants you to think that Jesus is just an outdated religion, that Jesus is just came and he came and he left. But the Bible tells us here, there shall be no end to his government. His reign is eternal. Amen. Hallelujah. The devil is eternally defeated. Amen. Amen. He will be cast into the pit. He'll be loosed for a season. And then he'll be put into the lake of fire forever. Glory to God, which is a second death. Glory be to God. But the throne of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, there shall be no end to his authority. Amen. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, the world, the world's, well, you say the world's getting darker and darker. Yeah, and the darker it gets, the brighter the light. Amen. I said the brighter the light. Amen. Amen. I mean, I can take you right now and I can like one of our little, you know, this little light is buying candles we can have over here. You know, and in this room right now with all this light on, and you'll see the flicker, but it won't, it won't, it actually won't even out light the light that's in here. It won't even cast a shadow. There's so much more other light. Turn out all the lights in this room, and you'll be amazed at how much light that projects into this room. So the darker it gets, the brighter the light shines. And even if the light itself doesn't change, if the light itself doesn't change, it shines brighter the more the darkness is there. So when the devil thinks he's trying to snuff out the light of God, I'm telling you, let me tell you this, folks. We've been through a rough period here in the past few years. Spiritually, there's been a darkness on our nation. You know, and I, listen, if you, you can call me whatever you want to call me. I don't care what you call me. The truth of the matter is I am not a racist. I do not have an, an, uh, animosity toward the president because of the color of his skin. But any man that stands up and, and says that he's pro-homosexual, He's pro-abortion. 
that he will not go to the prayer breakfast for Christians, but he'll go and honor the Muslim prayers. Yeah. I'm, I have a problem with. Yeah. Are you here? And there has been things brought on our nation. I don't know, last election we had election. We, we, we re-elected a president who opened, was the first open president who came out in favor of homosexual marriage. And what has happened in our nation in the last two years since that took place? It's like hell has unleashed a spirit on, the, on our nation. You've got, you got the Russians who have a better grasp on that than we do. The Russians are having more freedom of religion than we are. Are you here? Russia. You remember the communist group over there that we always fought against? And, but I, I take joy because the more the darkness shines, all of a sudden we're beginning to see people wake up because now there's light shining on them that they couldn't see before because there was so much other stuff going on. And now as the darkness is getting darker, the light is shining brighter. Hallelujah. And people are realizing Islam is not a peaceful religion. You know, they just went and assassinated 126 kids. Are you here? And all the teachers, they burned the teacher to death in front of them before they murdered the kids. But as darkness gets darker, Church is time for, and, and listen, the church has been in the place of slumber. We're now seeing people who were preaching crazy grace two years ago are now turning and coming back and saying, no, that, that's not, that's not, that, that extreme is not the truth. There's a turn taking place, church. Hallelujah. And I'm excited. Glory to God. Why? Because the light is shining. Hallelujah. It's been shining all along now, but all the other stuff is being separated out, and the darkness is coming in places where people once thought there was light, and now the true light is shining. Glory to God. And people are seeing Jesus is the answer. The son has been get born. The child has been, the, I mean, the child has been born. The son has been given. And he's going to be wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace, and of the increase of his government. There shall be no end. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. Amen. Now, we all know that the Magi were not there on the night of, uh, the, the night of Jesus' birth. They got there a couple of years later. And, you, and we could can, can just go prove that to you from Scripture. You know, they came to Herod, and he sent them away, and then they, they left and went another way, being warned of an angel. They found the young child, and he was in a house. Okay? There weren't three. There were, three, there were three gifts described, but the, the Magi traveled in caravans of between 40 and 60. So they showed up with 40 or 60 people carrying gold, frankincense, and myrrh. That was a lot of money. God funded his ministry. Hallelujah. Amen. But on that night, the shepherds were in the field, and the great light shone round about them. And the angels began to say, glory to God in the highest. Now, the King James translates it and says, and on earth, peace and goodwill toward men. Literally, the Greek says this, and on earth, peace towards men of goodwill. That's what the Greek really says. And on earth, peace towards men of goodwill. Why? Wow, you're not going to have peace if you're following the devil. Amen? You've got to follow Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. But that light shined on them. And I used to, there used to be the old gospel a trio uh, called the Lanny Wolf Trio. Some of you may have heard of him. I don't know. Anybody ever heard of Lanny Wolf? Bill, you never heard of him? You were a radio guy. Well, they, did, you know, they used to sing, when I saw the light, I rejoice with great joy. Now, the song is really star, but they changed it to light. You know? I need to have Nathan, I guess, and Shannon to, or sit up here. Whenever I want to sing, they just sing for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. They're, they're my living, you know, prop. Prop. They're my living prop. But they, they rejoiced. They began to rejoice with great joy. There was a heavenly host. Hallelujah. The angel appeared and announced that the light had come. Oh, glory be to God. I said, glory be to God. See, we, we, if we let darkness enter in, we can stop that darkness by turning to the light and letting God's light shine on our circumstances, letting God's light shine on our situation, letting God's light shine on our lives, praise God. And then we can begin once again to rejoice in the hour of desolation. Think of Israel. 
They had been some 1,500 years without, remember, from Malachi to the appearance of John the Baptist is about 1,500 years. No prophets, no voice, no declarations. 1,500 years, heaven seemed silent. And for a good portion of that time, Israel had been in captivity. The Roman Empire had been raised up. And the Roman Empire, you know, not, not, not the whole 1,500 years, but you know, for, for some time they had been under Roman occupation and Roman captivity. And, you know, and they were, they were, their, their, their priesthood had become a religious order and not the servants of God. And they were living in dark, and the Romans would let them operate to a certain level, you know, uh, as, you know of course, remember, remember, remember this? They sent, they sent um, uh, Jesus to Herod. Pontius Pilate sent him to Herod because Herod was the ruler of that place. But who sent him first? The high priest sent him first. So they were in cahoots with the Roman government. Amen. And so there's great darkness. The earth is covered in darkness because there's no light shining. There's no, there's no prophecy. There's no word of the Lord coming forth. 1,500 years since the Italian prophet Malachi. Get it, Malachi and Malachi? <laughs> Somebody laughed. Karen, Karen was like, yeah. 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 Since the last, yeah, he's not, and that's a joke, guys. Don't go say he's an Italian prophet. Oh, he said he was an Italian prophet. It's just it's a joke. 1,500 years. How many of you have ever been 15 days in silence? God's not hearing me. God's not talking to me. Nothing's going on. Try 1,500 years of that. You keep looking back, you know, one of the things that Malachi said was the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. There's all kinds of stuff there in Malachi written, and we're waiting for it, waiting for it, and waiting for it. And then John the Baptist shows up. You know? They're all the sons, and all of a sudden these guys are out just taking care of their sheep in the field, and heaven opens up, and angels, you know, an angel begins to speak. The light shines. For unto you is born this day of the city of David, Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Unto you this day. Oh, thank God. God is still saying unto you this day. There are answers from heaven. There are things that Jesus has purchased for you. There are, there are deliverances that the Lord has brought to your hand. Can somebody say glory be to God? Hallelujah. God loves humanity so much. Unto you born this day in the city of David. Hallelujah. Remember the angel say, fear not. Man, you, know, you start seeing that. When you start seeing glowing beings shine up in the sky, it can mess up your night. You may have heard of angels, but when you see one, it can mess up your day. Throughout the Bible, they fell down at their feet and worshiped them. They had to be told, fear not. Over and over again, they had to be told, fear not. I'm an angel of the Lord, you know. Even when I think, no, don't worship me. You can't worship the angel, you know. I mean, can you imagine? What if you go home today and sit down at dinner? All of a sudden, the angel walks through the wall of your, your dining room and stands there. I am sent from heaven. Yeah. Well, I would, be, I would just have a conversation with him. Hogwash. You'd have goosebumps that look like Mount Everest. <laughs> Amen. Amen. It would shake you up. Amen. It would be cool. Jerry says it would be cool. Yeah. Once yeah. you figured out it was an angel and not, you know, not some you know, walking dead thing from TV or something. <laughs> <laughs> but they're out there tending the sheep. And the angel appears to him and says, fear not, for behold, I bring you what? Good tidings of great joy. Now remember what it said here, their joy shall be like the harvest. Amen? Their joy will be like when they bring in the harvest and they divide the spoil, which shall be unto all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. So he been prophesied. he been prophesied. How long had Jesus been prophesied? Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. The virgin birth was prophesied in the third chapter of Genesis, the 15th verse. The seed of the woman shall bruise your heel and you'll bruise his head. Women don't have seed. Virgin birth, supernatural birth, prophesied. And as soon as Adam fell, God, God had a plan. As a matter of fact, God had a plan because he had the Savior, found, the Savior of the world from the foundation of the world. He was, he was already the Savior before the world was even created. 
Amen? Which is Christ the Lord. And that light, and suddenly there appeared unto them a heavenly host, a multitude of angels. Amen? Amen? Singing glory to God in the highest. Can I say something today? Now, I have a nativity out in my front yard, and I got the three wise men out there. I didn't take them out just because it's not quite scripturally accurate. People, you know, you'd have a messed up nativity scene if you didn't have the three wise men. You know, you know people, people could be riding by saying, they're missing something. And instead of messing everybody up and trying to explain it to them, you just put them out there. They did show up later, all right? I got the baby Jesus out there. Amen? He's, in their mind, are kind of lit up from the inside. You put light, there's, there's, there's lights in them, so they light up, they glow. Hallelujah. The glowing Jesus. Hallelujah. And I, and I get it, you know, that we, we are so excited. We celebrate Christ the Lord. Now, here's what the world does. They celebrate Christ the Lord, then they get drunk seven days later. New Year's gets here, and they all get drunk, you know. Think about it. <clears throat> I mean, all of a sudden, it's, it's party time. It is party time. Glory to God, I'm born again, and I'm saved, and I got the answers to life. And Michelob ain't it. Amen. But anyway, so we, we're coming up this time of year, and everybody, everybody kind of, you know, talks about baby Jesus, you know, away in a manger, little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head, you know, and all, all the kind of stuff. And we all, we have all those songs we sing, and I'm not against any of them. I'm not saying you shouldn't sing them. Uh, we, we do need to recognize the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. I preach a sermon every once in a while at Christmas, and the child grew up. Because the reason for Christmas, that we celebrate Christmas, is because of Easter, or really Passover. Easter is not the correct translation, but anyway, without going into all that, when Jesus died on the cross and was raised from the dead, it made Christmas of significance historically. Okay? Amen? The child grew up. But this week, as we're taking time to, you know, to do all the things we do, it is, how many you know what the word, where Christmas came from? It's the Christ Mass. It is the, you know, you know Mass is, is, is a Catholic term used for celebration. And so it is the celebration of Christ. Christmas is the celebration of Christ. Amen. So it's, it's a good word, you know, the Christ Mass. It is a time we come to celebrate the Christ, the anointed one, sent to redeem mankind from his sin. To not just to redeem us from our sin, but to restore us to the Father in a state of spiritual relationship. Now, in this time, and we, we know this, that during, during this season between Thanksgiving and New Year's, more suicides happen than any other time of the year. Because we're not getting the light to people. It's not about whether you've got family that, you know, listen, we, do, we have traditions, and all the traditions are fine. What's our tradition? Our tradition is on Christmas Eve we have a ham, and on Christmas Day we have a turkey, and bring out the ham again. Hallelujah. You know, with stuffing and mashed potatoes and gravy. I mean, just like a Thanksgiving meal. We had that again on Christmas Day. We had the ham on Christmas Eve. Amen. We picked up some, when we were down in Green, we went and got some, had her, my brother-in-law go get us some cabbage collards. We have collards at Christmas. Amen. We had to blanch them and put them in the freezer last night, but they'll, they'll be cooked on, thir on Wednesday for, Friday, for Thursday. Hallelujah. Amen. And we have traditions. You know, we, we, uh, we do our Christmas at, on Christmas morning. You know, some people do it Christmas Eve. You know, we have a tree. I have a tree. I have three trees. For all you anti-tree Christians, I have three. They go find some obscure scripture. I got seven. Oh, he's saying we got two at the front door. You got one. You got two little ones. One in the bathroom. You got one in the hallway. Two at the front door. And you know that's that's a one, two, three, four. Actually, I got one in my bedroom. That's five. More. That's eight. Sandy has nine. You see, I'll put one up today, I'll match her. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I've got, I've got one in the front living room, the front, the front of the house, that, you know, in our, in our formal living room. I've got one upstairs in our bonus room, and we have a real one downstairs in the, in the uh, downstairs family room. You know, we started, that, we started doing that a couple years, last year or so because we, we got tired of just all the artificial trees and not the aroma. I love the smell of the pine. Yeah. We have it drops pine needles everywhere. Mm -hmm. Takes care of that. Amen. You got to water it. Yeah. Shannon, Nathan, go water the tree. It works real good. 
I have to say, I look down and say, it looks like a little low. Get some water and put it in there, guys. <laughs> we, put, we put stuff on our mantle. We put nat nativity scenes up. We do all kinds of stuff, you know. We decorate our mantle with lights and garland, you know, and, you know, we decorate our banister of our stairwell. And, you know, all we have, all traditions, we, we do stuff, we do things with our family. We, we always cook a carrot cake and pecan pies and uh, pumpkin pies and fudge. Now, my, my family, we, like, we always ate, ate seafoam. My wife didn't care for seafoam that much. How many like seafoam candy? How many know what it is? It's the white, puffy stuff with, am I not on? Okay. It's the white stuff with nuts in it. Huh? Divinity? Uh, some people call it divinity. It's seafoam candy. Anyway, because it looks like foam from the sea. I guess if you're from Eastern Carolina, it's seafoam because we're closer to the coast. So we have, there's nothing wrong with traditions as long as they don't make the word of God of none effect. See, the re Jesus got upset with the traditions because they made the word of God of none effect. See, I don't celebrate Santa. We don't, I don't, and I don't have a problem with Santa, Okay. I'm going to mess up your, I'm going to mess you up this morning. You ready to get messed up? You know, I remember Dad Hagen only walked around praying in tongues and walked on clouds and was in the street. He dressed up like Santa Claus for the kids. <laughs> Brother Hagen. <laughs> right, but he was praying in tongues when he did. No, he wasn't. <laughs> people, people hang Santa outside in effigy with a deuce around his neck, Satan claws and all this kind of stuff. St. Nicholas was a Catholic saint who gave gifts and took care of children, and that's where that, that came from, you know. And so you don't have to get all uptight about it. There's nothing wrong because we don't worship Santa Claus. Jesus, we, we, you know, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the reason. We don't make Jesus of none effect through our traditions. They're just traditions that we do that do not supersede the truth, and we always tell the truth. We always told our kids Santa Claus wasn't real, but, you know, we, we don't mind doing it. It's okay. So if you've got kids and you, probably, you haven't told them that and they're next door this morning, you're probably glad they're next door. <coughs> anyway. But we're living in a time when people get caught up in the commercialization. And if they're not caught up in the commercialization, they're caught up in what, that, that nobody's there for them. They're They're sad. How many of you ever heard that song? There's no place like home for the holidays. I believe the Carpenters did. I don't know who, I mean, everybody in the world's done it, but the Carpenters did it back in the, you know, when, when, they, when she was still alive. They had a Christmas album. They, There's no place like home for the holidays. And everybody sings about you know, going home and having family. There's, lot, there's people who don't have family. There's people who don't have anybody. And that's bringing me to this today. You have the light. And on the inside of you this morning, the light of God's glory can shine on another person. One of the reasons we take up food right now at this time of year is because there will be a lot of people who are sitting in their homes without enough food to take care of their family. They're going to be, listen, the Caps, Salvation Army, I'm telling you, I'm so impressed with what they did. How many bicycles did y'all have in the warehouse? 500. Five, 500 bicycles were given to Salvation Army to give to children for Christmas. At the old Winn Dixie, right across the street. That's where they got it stored? Okay. And somebody bought how many? One person bought. 300. One person bought 300 and gave to the Salvation Army to give to kids whose parents wouldn't be able to give them a Christmas this year. 3,400 families are going to be ministered to out of what they have in that warehouse. Now, we can't do that individually on that kind of scale. We can help those. One of the reasons we help urban ministry is because not only are there going to be people without Christmas presents for their kids, there's going to be people without food. And so that's why we do this. And that as a church corporate that ministry is to minister to people. But that doesn't absolve us of being light individually to people who are hurting. Amen? So let's be light. Let's, be, let's have a good word. Let's have something. I, I've, got, I've already told my kids, we, our, our neighbor across the street, has, um, is, he's gotten really frail the past few, couple, three years. And um, we, we, I think, I can't remember if it's either Alzheimer's or MS. I'm not sure what he's, he's de been dealing with. But... He, he, you, when the kids were younger, they would always go over and take boxes of um, uh, fudge and stuff to them and, and tell them Merry Christmas, and they were all the little guys. He loved it. 
So this year, I've, I've told them, I want you all to go over there across the street. I want you to take care of your guitar. I want you all to sing Christmas, couple of Christmas carols to them. And then give them the, the pecan pie or the chocolate pie or whatever. And just bless and be light. Be a blessing. You can do little things to be light to people this time of year. I know this isn't a you know, powerful Christmas message. Oh, but we, I know all you guys. You guys are saved. You love Jesus, you know. But now I'm going to encourage you. Let's go out into this world. What a wonderful time to be able to be light to people who are hurting and share the love of God with them. What a wonderful time to let them know Jesus loves them and came for them. And that he's no longer in the manger. He grew up and became a man and went to the cross, paid the price for our sin, was, was raised for our justification, seated at the right hand of the Father where he ever lives to make intercession for us. He's alive. He's not the babe in the manger anymore. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords on the right hand of the Father. Amen. And so let's be light to people. Let's let them have joy. Amen. It is amazing what, what will do for people for you to be light to them. I know I to, I, sometimes I'll have friends put stuff on Facebook and I'll just, I don't, most of the time I don't answer some of their, somebody will say, you know, going through a hard time, pray for me or whatever, you know, and, 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 a lot, and, and the majority of the time I will message them behind the scenes and encourage them and give them scripture. And minister to them. And I, I can't tell you how many friends I've had come back. That, I, that People I went to high school stuff with. You know. They don't reject you. They don't slam you. They're so appreciative. And thank you for the, for the encouragement. Amen. We can be light. With simple things. We don't have, you don't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be deep and heavy revy. But you can be light. And people are sitting right here. In this, in this time of year, which was supposed to be the most joyful in our culture, because we celebrate the birth of Christ, but the, the secularists have done everything they can to rob that. The kids now go on winter break. They don't go on Christmas holiday. It's winter break. Really? It's amazing how winter break always lines up with Christmas. You know? Christmas Day and Christmas Eve are always during winter break. Amazing. Spring break. You know, it's, it's just a, it's a secular, but I'm going to tell you something. <coughs> now, here's what I was going to say earlier. I kind of got the more they work to make things dark, the brighter our light shines. And the more they darken everything they can darken, understand Islam, Hinduism, cults, atheism, everything else is already dark. And when you turn off any reflecting light around it, when all the lights are turned out that they think that they're turning out to shut us down, the only light that will be shining is Jesus Christ. Amen. And just as Satan was fooled into taking Jesus and being conquered, the darkness of this world is going to be fooled by thinking they're going to put the church out and the church will be the only thing left standing and shining. Amen. And great will be the harvest. And there will be great joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The very people. I'm telling you, I am telling you, I'm telling you. Can I, can I say something without anybody thinking anything? The African-American community in America is now beginning to turn on the very party they, that they've supported for years because the light, has, the, the darkness is beginning to shine on all the junk that's been going on, and now the light is shining. Now, I'm not talking about you've got to be a Republican or Democrat, but the, the value system. Because I believe most African Americans are, are in their heart are conservative in values. Not, maybe not politics, but in values. They don't believe in homosexual marriage. They don't believe in abortion. They do believe in working hard and God blessing them. Amen? Amen? I believe that. I believe that they believe you put your hand to the plow and don't look back. And I believe there's a turn taking place towards the things of God. And not supporting people just because of a, of a political reason. I believe it's taking place. I see it. I see, you know, it was, it was, it's not big. I see it. It doesn't matter. It's going to have to be big to start with. And then all the people who think that they're being cool by voting for things because they think it's cool. They're seeing it. Light's shining. It's being separated. And people run into the light. They're running to the light. Well, I, I believe before the end, there's going to be a great reviving in our nation and a turning to. Amen? And then the church will be taken out. 
And I don't mean taken out like militarily. They'll be taken out by the rapture of the church. And then Satan, Satan will have his way for a few years, and then Jesus is going to come and, and, and uh, put some serious smack down. There you go. Called Armageddon. Amen. And I'm not talking about the asteroid movie. Hallelujah. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.